Oh, goodness. Okay. Hello, hello. I'm glad you could make it, Eleanor. This is wonderful. And Mary and Deirdre and Terry, so great to have all of you. Oh, all right. So welcome. I will continue to let people in the door who could join me live here in Zoom. I'm going to go ahead and record this so that you can come back to it, especially since the um, it's always a tongue twister. Full super moon happens on Sunday, July. Well, is, when is July 3rd? Is that Sunday or Saturday? Like Monday. I think that's Monday, isn't it? So you'll have this practice to come back to. All right, here goes. Welcome. And thank you for joining me for this very, very special full supermoon meditative practice. I am excited to share this with you for a number of reasons. Number one, I love celebrating the moon. The moon represents our emotions, our feelings. And I find that if you can pay attention to what the moon is doing, is it full? Is it new? Is it in Capricorn? Is it in Libra? What happens is that it gives you extra insight and information as to how you're feeling that day, how you might navigate, because I tell you what, so many of my clients come to me and they're frustrated. They have big work projects. They've got to get done a presentation. It's due by tomorrow and they have no motivation. And they're like, oh my gosh, all I want to do is sit on the couch and watch rom-coms with my chocolate. And I'll say, well, you know, the moon is in cancer and you tend to be a little more sensitive to the moon. Most of us are sensitive to a certain degree because the moon affects the waters, the tides of the ocean, just like the waters in our body. But what I find is when I point this out to my clients and they realize, oh, the moon, oh, the moon's in cancer. No wonder. I want to nurture my heart. I want to take it easy. I want to nestle down at home. I don't want to be out there in the world going and doing big things. Let's say like if the moon were in Capricorn. So when we start to notice these patterns and rhythms, it gives you the ability to plan so that you know, okay, I've got this big project or presentation I need to give. I may not want to give it on that particular day because the moon is in a position that affects me in a way where I want to be introverted, where I want to go within. So you're not beating yourself up because it'll change. As soon as the moon goes into Capricorn or the moon goes into Virgo, you're going to get down into the organizational tactics and you start to recognize the patterns. That's why I love to work with the moon like this. It gives you insight and information. It saves you a lot of heartache and time. And it puts that inner mean girl, that critic to bed. Because I tell you what, nobody's got time for her. <laughs> All right. So speaking of time, let's go into this practice a little bit deeper. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to keep me on track because there are so many wonderful things I want to share with you about this. and. Holy cannoli, hold on one second. I'm not going to share yet because what I wanted to show. Oh, that's perfect. Yay, Donna's here. She made it. Oh, there I am. <laughs> all this, all these wonderful screens that are popping up. Okay, so now I will share my screen to keep me on track. Here goes. And I'm going to just go ahead and see. There we are. Okay. I can get to that presentation button. No, and I should start at the beginning, shouldn't I? All righty. Okay, so super moon meditation. Let's just talk about moons in general. Um, full moons. So when we have a super moon, usually what you're going to discover is that it coincides with a full moon. And full moons are about completing. It's a culmination. So it's like the graduation. It's that moment in time where you've worked so hard and everything is coming to fruition. The project is wrapping up. You can look back and reflect on where did I begin with a new moon? I had a dream and an, and an intention. Did I achieve what I wanted to? Am I still on the right track? So full moons are wonderful for taking a moment to pause, to look back and reflect at what have I been working on for the last two to four weeks? Is that building into something that is keeping me towards my higher goal? When you do this, you might discover that with that full moon reflection, because full moons illuminate, you discover, you know what, I got to release a few things. This is distracting me. This is pulling me off my track. 
I'm going to let this go. So a lot of times you'll hear about doing practices with release when it comes to full moons. You might find that you want to do a burning bowl ceremony or you want to do a wonderful full moon bath in order to just release the toxins from your space. So that is a wonderful thing to do with full moons as well. But what makes this a super moon, this upcoming moon, super duper special is that the moon is at its closest point to the earth when a super moon occurs. So it's it when you look at it on the horizon, when it's moon rise, what you'll see is it just looks super duper large, larger than it normally would. So it looks 14% bigger sometimes, up to 30% brighter. And what does that mean for someone who's sensitive to the moon? Well, everything's magnified. Emotions are bigger. We feel more. Things are intensified. So with this full moon, you might find it's difficult to sleep or all of a sudden you're reviewing responsibilities. And we're going to get into that, this specific moon and what it can mean for you. But when is a super moon occurring? It's happening this Sunday, July 3rd, 7.38 a.m. And I want to say, is that really Sunday? I need to look at my, because I feel like time and I are on, no, it's Monday. Ha ha. So Monday, July 3rd, 2023 at 7.38 a.m. Eastern time. And you can readjust for where you are using this little link down here, almanac.com. And you can just say, what's moonrise for me where I live? Because one of the things that's going to be very beneficial is if you take a moment to go outside and you simply connect with the moon and the meditative practice we're going to go over today is going to be super helpful for you. I encourage you to come back and to listen to it and sit with that big, bright, beautiful moon because it is going to be lighting up things in your life. Now, this is a picture, an astrological chart of the full moon that's happening in Capricorn this Monday, July 3rd. And the reason that I'm sharing this is because even though it's all Greek, so to speak, all hieroglyphics and symbols and signs, it may not mean anything to you right now, but there is an energetic imprint. This can be used almost like a focal point for the meditation where the energy impresses itself upon you. And what you begin to discover is that even though you may not have the words to express what you're looking at, things start to shift energetically within you. The big things that I want to bring to your attention here are the moon, the circle with the dot over here on the left side, or I'm sorry, the sun, holy cannoli, the sun over here, and the moon over here to the right. And what you see is when the sun and the moon are opposing each other on a natal wheel like this, they are full. If they're right next to each other in this chart, then that would be considered a new moon. But when they're opposing each other on the chart, it's full. And when you have something that's opposing one another, think of it like a teeter-totter. You're trying to find the fulcrum, the balance. It could be a tug of war, but the big goal here is what is the sweet spot? The sweet spot for this full moon has to do with Capricorn energy. Where do you feel responsibilities in your life? Things that might have been weighing you down, things where you need to take charge, where you want to be more present in your career and in work. And how do you balance that with your heart, with your home? The sun in cancer, cancer energy represents the home. It represents feelings. It represents your family, nurturing your spirit. How do you balance that with your public image, with being out there in the world and working? We are being encouraged to heal a lot of old wounds. This little guy up here, Chiron, is popping up and is talking to the moon, creating what's called a square and saying, listen, this full moon, this super moon is affording you an opportunity to heal an old wound, an old wound where you may have felt guilty for wanting to pursue a career outside of traditional um, roles or gender um, and stereotypes. Maybe it's an old wound of desiring, you know, something bigger than what your family has experienced in the past, their legacy. Maybe it's um, achieving certain things at work and breaking through old ancestral patterns and legacies. 
But this moon is about balance, specifically your career, your work, your responsibilities in this world with your home life and with your heart to come into a divine right relationship, something that really balances the energy of enjoying yourself, that downtime, along with the need to do and to go. And I say that just because of where Mars and Venus are popping up. And if you want to know specifically where this is hitting your chart or lighting it up, as I prefer to say, then hit reply to any of the emails I put out there or just drop a little comment and I'll I'll share next steps with you on how you can do that. But specifically in the overall for all of us, as we look at this, it's an opportunity to say, hmm, how can I balance how I show up in the world with how I show up at home? Something that feels in divine right relationship. All right. So for the meditation that I'm going to be sharing with you, there are three key steps and three-step key. You know, it's very interesting the way my mind works. It doesn't always work in the English language. <laughs> and the more that you speak the language of intuition, what you discover is that your angels and your guides come through in charades and you get these feelings and these impressions. And it's up to us as an intuitive and an empath to translate these words or these feelings into words. And uh, often I find that I have been combining my words. I don't know about you, but energy is speeding up. And it's speeding up so fast that I feel that the English language doesn't always keep up with me or the spoken language. And I much prefer to play in the world of energy and share energetically what's happening. And that's what I'm going to do with you today in this meditative process. So in this meditation, anytime you sit down to meditate, there are three things you can do. This is a three-step key. And I guess that's what I meant, really. I like to first take a moment to recognize how important setting up the places where you meditate. Set up is a key point. You can have a dedicated space. Um, it makes it really nice. It doesn't have to be this separate room in your home or something very elaborate. It can be. But if you can create just a simple little corner, and my corner is over here, so I tend to look at it when I talk about it, then it's moved quite frequently. Sometimes it's in my closet. But setting up a space where when I look over at that corner, I'm reminded of my meditative practice, and I can easily be drawn back into a place of stillness and of calm. So when you have a dedicated space set up, it makes it so much easier to weave in a practice into your life, a meditative practice. It could be the corner of your living room in a favorite chair. Like I said before, the back of your closet. It could be your backyard. Maybe you just sit outside somewhere and you listen to the bird song. But it's a space that you go back to over and over and over. And it makes a difference. The second thing is scheduling. This is something I learned early on. Meditative practices are interesting in the sense of sometimes it can be very random. Um, we think, oh, I should do this. Everybody says it's good for me. I know I need to do this. It's going to release anxiety. It's going to calm me. But what happens is life gets in the way. So when you write it down in your planner or in your diary saying, I'm going to meditate at 7 a.m. every morning or just on Mondays, could be for five minutes, it could be for two minutes. But what you're doing is you're placing importance on it, just like you would any other appointment, like a doctor's appointment. And you're meeting essentially at during that time with your angels and your guides and with source. And what you do by setting that appointment and maintaining it consistently is that you're saying, I respect you friends in high places, my angels and my guides, I respect your time, even though time is different on the other side. And what that does is it changes and shifts your engagement with a meditative practice. It's something that you can begin to look forward to. And then the third thing, I always love to bring in a little bit of humor, because our angels and guides always do that as well, is don't fear the monkey. <laughs> what I mean by that is when we sit down to finally meditate, we've picked a spot, we've set up a time, it doesn't always have to be the same time. It's great in the beginning if it can be. 
Um, but you sit down and as soon as you sit down, your mind starts to jump from thought to thought to thought. The yogis call this monkey mind, like a little monkey jumping all around. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Remember that a meditative practice, the goal is not to empty your mind. It's not to think of nothing. It's to allow yourself to completely relax fully in the moment, to be so present that time goes by and you don't even realize it. So the thoughts will come. It's okay. Think of them like a cloud in the sky and they just gently float by like up. Oh, there pops another one. I'm going to let it go by like a cloud. And then you go back to a focal point. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. All right. So let's get into this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to invite you to take your seat. And when you take your seat, it's simply bringing your awareness into the center of your chest. It's relaxing your shoulders and becoming aware of the sound of your breath. So take a moment to visualize a color or a symbol in the center of your chest. This color represents you today. It can be different each day. There we go. So as we take this moment to set up our space, we've chosen the place to sit today. Maybe it's one you come back to tomorrow or the next. Maybe it's an energetic representation of simply being present. We've scheduled our time together. And I want to invite you to simply become aware now of the sounds. Maybe the sounds of my puppy as she snores. The sounds outside your home, cars or trees or bird song. Become aware of the sounds inside your home. That's it. Notice the temperature of the air against your skin, the warmth or the coolness of it. And notice the way your clothes conform to the shapes and the angles of your body. So all the distractions that might be around you, you're going to simply allow them to fade into the background. I want to invite you to imagine that I was right there with you. This beautiful energy of the moon that we have is taking place in an earth sign. And we're going to bring in that element of earth imagining almost that I was there with you, my hands a few inches beneath the soles of your feet and simply bringing through this very grounding, stabilizing energy. What this full super moon is providing is a way to check in with your foundation. Are you grounded? What responsibilities may have you, you may have placed to the side that are being illuminated to be handled in this moment? What responsibilities are meant to be released? That's it. So much emotion swirling. So remember the other side of this teeter-totter, the sun in cancer energy, emotions, home, nurturing. Where have your responsibilities been out of harmony or balance 
with your feelings, with your heart. We're at the halfway point of the calendar year. And you might discover that there were certain intentions, resolutions you made when the sun was in Capricorn back at the beginning of the year. That you have the opportunity to revisit right now. And bring through this beautiful wave of golden light. So if you were sitting outside in the garden and the sun was shining down I want to invite you to imagine a beautiful column of light that runs from the center of the heavens down through the crown of the head, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus. It's there in the solar plexus, the bridge that brings us into the physical. Your courage, your confidence, the skills you have what you need in this moment in time to pursue your dreams. The full moon illuminates where you might feel like you're missing something. And Jupiter in Taurus is providing the energetic assistance to connect you with the resources necessary to move forward. Oh, that's solar plexus. We're just staying there in third chakra for another moment. Digesting and processing the information. Too often imposter syndrome or guilt or questioning comes in and holds a person back from taking the step forward into their dream. It might simply be taking a leap of faith, taking on a responsibility that you may not be 100% sure of yet how it's going to unfold, but you feel compelled. Something is guiding and leading you towards this destiny. There we go. We're going to just shift the front of the third chakra, front of the solar plexus, just a little bit more. Because the energy as we got on, it was almost like green goblin energy in the sense of um, just mischievous, distracting, wanting to kind of like eat up time and energy. But claim your power back. Solar plexus is your power. These are your gifts. You came into this world with a very unique set of gifts. I know gifts sometimes can be similar. Many people can sing, but the way they interpret a song, the tenor of their voice, the timbre of it, it's so different each person. And the world needs your unique expression of it. As Pluto is moving and just going back into Capricorn briefly, it's helping to tear down any of the old structures and paradigms and rules that might have kept you stuck in fear or competition or scarcity or old paradigms. It's allowing you now to shift into the energy of Aquarius, that age of Aquarius of community, of working together, fostering relationships that are mutually beneficial. Here we go. You're not alone on your journey. Allow this light to continue down through lower belly, second chakra, creativity, down through the root, between the legs to the very core of the earth. And it's so interesting. Just be aware of all of your senses, smells, tastes, sounds, ideas, feelings, images. Because as we go down and we'll go through root chakra, I hear this pop. 
It's just a shift in awareness, like a little aha, like the light turning on. This full super moon has the ability to illuminate, to light up the areas in your life that have not been in divine right relationship, where there hasn't been harmony where you may have been giving too much. Maybe work has been demanding so much of your time that you haven't been able to be fully present at home. Maybe you've been at a home and, and hesitating to go out there into the world and share your gifts. What is the harmonious place for you? The other aspect of this too, from a stereotypical or general level, is that cancer represents archetypally the mothering energy. And Saturn, who rules Capricorn, the Capricorn energy is father energy. Cancer is associated with the moon, Capricorn with Saturn. So we have this balance between mother and father energy as well. Good, allow this golden column of light to continue to the very core of the earth. Good, feel the shift in your ears. So with this moment in time, there's also the opportunity to receive ahas, insights. Sometimes people call them downloads. So like beautiful golden waves of sparkling light, they come directly to you. You have free will, so it's up to you if you choose to receive them or not. But allow these moments to inspire. That's it. Good. Back of the third chakra, we're going to go to a place called the Ming Men Doorway. Connecting to the ancestral line, connecting to fertility. And when I say fertility, uh, it could be biological fertility, but also figurative ideas, inspirations, wherever there has been like a kink in the hose in the family line, a flowing of ideas where it might have like the garden hose gotten kinked up. We're going to just clear and release, feel the shift in the throat. The ability to no longer censor or the need to no longer censor your words. Because many times, so the Capricorn energy, Capricorn rules the 10th house, which is public image going out there into the world, how you're showing up, how the world sees you. And sometimes I've worked with clients before who are teachers and they need to be very careful what they post, what they say. They need to censor because of their work. Sometimes it's because of family. Belief systems might be different. But what it does is it holds you back. You censor yourself. You can't be your whole self. So what is the divine right relationship for you with what you are saying now, what you haven't been able to say in the past? that your heart is saying, I can no longer keep under wraps. In order to find peace with who I am, I have to be able to show up in the world as I truly am. Because the Capricorn full moon at 11 degrees, 11 is a number of integrity. You've got those two ones next to each other. It's not a slightly askew one. They're both parallel and even. There's integrity to the number. It's about showing up and loving yourself and loving yourself some more as you are. No more is required, no less. But in this moment in time, you are exactly where you need to be. There you go. Feel the integration in the heart. And the path will continue to unfold before you. bringing through energy to integrate. Beautiful. Take one more breath.
Turn with the gaze towards the floor. Slowly, slowly open your eyes. Good. Oh, and breathe. So for those of you who are able to join me in Zoom, please feel free to stay on for a couple extra minutes. For those who are joining in in the live stream, I'm just going to blow our live stream friends kisses and um, stop the stream so that those of you who are with me here, we can chat a little bit more. Um, but for those watching the live stream, just check the link around whatever post it is if you want to take these practices deeper. <laughs> 